Hi everyone, back again with another tree map compilation for you. This time it's a map of Great Britain and Ireland made out of interesting trees from that region. Unlike the state tree map, I did not restrict myself to official national trees because that felt way less interesting to me. We would have ended up with a map that's almost entirely oak and I wanted to have some more diversity. This is more of like a mini series. It ran over TikTok over the summer. It was a ton of fun, some really cool facts, some awesome trees, and I think the final map turned out amazing. So enjoy. First up, it's the lovely land of Scotland, which we're gonna make out of the Scots pine, Pinus sylvestris. A compelling conifer that typically grows 120 feet high and up to 150 feet, one of my favorite features of this tree is the flaky orange-red bark found on its newer growth sections. With a native range spanning much of the Eurasian continent, it's the only pine native to northern Europe, where it's mainly found on poorer sandy soils, rocky areas, and peat bogs, as it's usually outcompeted on fertile sites. The Scots pine was once found across the British Isles, but it now occurs naturally only in Scotland, and during the medieval period, a great pine forest stretched across the Scottish Highlands. It began to disappear around the 17th century as forests were cleared for shipbuilding and making charcoal, and by the late 1900s, a mere sliver of the original forest remained. Though reforestation efforts have picked up over the past few decades. In the pre-industrial age, the tree was primarily used to make tar and has also been used as a source of rosin and turpentine. Its wood is primarily used in construction and also to make pulp and paper. It's also long been a popular landscaping tree throughout the world and was one of the first trees introduced to North America in about 1600. And it was one of the most popular their Christmas tree species from the 1950s through the 80s. The Scots pine is so significant to Scotland that in 2014 it actually became its national tree. But we're not necessarily going to go with only official national trees this series. So while we admire our Scots pine Scotland, tell me which part of the Isles we should make next and which tree we should use. You know what that sound means. Time for a brand new piece on our brand new map. Up next, it's the lovely Republic of Ireland. And before we get into the tree, I want to thank everyone who commented and DM'd with their perspective and suggestions on whether or not to separate Northern Ireland. It's a sensitive subject and one that I have to acknowledge I have no lived experience about. So even though with these maps, I'm just going to be following borders as they're printed on maps, know that I do hear and appreciate you. So now on to the tree. We're going to make this out of a piece of European ash, Fraxinus excelsior. A captivating tree in every sense. The ash grows from about 60 to as much as 140 feet tall, with a trunk diameter of 6.5 to up to 11 feet. It has a tall, narrow crown, thick fissured gray bark, and pinnately compound leaves that are often the last to open in the spring and the first to fall in autumn. Its native range spans much of Europe, including all of Ireland and the UK, where it grows on a wide range of soil types, but most prefers limestone. The ash has many deep historical and modern cultural ties with Ireland. Of the five sacred guardian trees of Ireland in Celtic mythology, three Three of them were ash trees, and together with the oak and hawthorn, the ash made up a magical trilogy of trees in Irish folklore. Some of its many traditional uses include pickling and eating its edible samaras, its astringent leaves and sap were used in some herbal remedies, but by far its most useful quality has been its wood. It has some of the highest flexibility and shock resistance of any species, making it one of the ideal woods for tool handles, especially hammers and axes. And it's the only wood used to make hurleys or hurls, the sticks used in Ireland's national sport of hurling. Ash timber is so deeply connected to the game of hurling that it's often referred to as the clash of the ash. And it's not just a super useful wood, but a clean and gorgeous one at that. I mean, just look at that grain and warm color. Our Ashwood Republic of Ireland looks excellent up on the board. Let me know your favorite thing about the ash tree and tell me which part of the British and Irish Isles we should make next and which tree we should use. Check it out. It's a nice big piece. Up next, it's the lovely land of England, which we're going to make out of a piece of English oak, Quercus rober. Also called the common oak, pedunculate oak, and European oak, it's a member of the white oak family with a broad native range that spans much of Europe. A classically impressive tree in just about every sense, they can grow to be quite large with exceptionally thick trunks and widespreading crowns. They're long-lived, especially when carefully pruned, with some specimens reaching well over a thousand years. A couple famous English oak trees include the royal oak, which then future King Charles II second used to hide from pursuers during the English Civil War. Its descendant stands on the side of the original tree, and fun fact, the Royal Oak is the third most popular pub name in all of Britain. Even more famous is the Major Oak, a thousand-year-old tree located in Sherwood Forest, which according to English folklore is the tree that was home to Robin Hood and his merry men. English oak acorns were a crucial food source prior to the domestication of wheat, and galls found on the tree's leaves were once an important source of ink. The tree's wood is exceptionally hard and strong, and it was famously used to build the warships in the English Navy. It's also used to make wine and whiskey barrels, furniture, cabinetry, and more. The English oak is England's national tree, and its close relative, the Cecil oak, is also the official tree of Ireland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, making the oak one of the most culturally significant trees in the region. 
I'd like to thank Paul Vellante for sending me this gorgeous piece of English oak. It looks nice and classy up on our board, and we're already closing in on the back half of this mini-series, so tell me which piece we should make next and which tree we should use. For our next piece on the map, we got this adorable tiny little piece of wood here. Look at it. Up next, it's the lovely Isle of Man, which we're going to make out of a piece of rowan, Sorbus acuparia. It grows between 5 to 15 meters, or 15 to 50 feet tall, with a slender trunk, smooth bark, and pinnate leaves that resemble that of the ash tree, which is how this tree got nicknamed the mountain ash, despite being completely unrelated. It's most widely recognized by its fruit, which it carries in ample supply just about every year. These fruits are small round poems that start out green and turn orange or scarlet as they ripen from August to October. It's a hardy species that does well in a variety of locations and is found throughout the UK and Ireland and is common on the Isle of Man. It's also a tree with deep connections to folklore and mythology. In Manx tradition, a cross kern is a small trinket made out of rowan twigs and wool and is used to protect your home from evil spirits, particularly on May Day Eve. The rowan is associated with protection and warding off evil spirits and witches across many traditions, due in part perhaps to the tiny five-pointed star found on the end of each of its berries as the pentagram is an ancient protective symbol. Its bark can be used to dye wool brown or red, and its wood is strong and carves well and can be used to make walking sticks, tool handles, and in hobby applications. Rowan fruit is bitter and astringent, but they can be debittered through drying, freezing, or cooking and can be used to make jelly, jam, or syrup, wine, or liquor. The tree's resilience makes it a solid source for fruit in harsh mountain climates, which has led people to invest in developing cultivars that might produce sweeter crops. The rowan is a truly magical tree, and it served our little Isle of Man quite well here. It looks charming up on the board. Tell me if you've ever tasted anything made out of rowan fruit, and let me know what piece we should make next. Well, the new map's already almost complete, but I got good news. Our next piece is really cool. I mean, look at all that spalting. Today, we're going to make the lovely land of Northern Ireland out of a piece of hawthorn, Crutagus monogyna. Also known as the common hawthorn, it's a shrub or small tree that grows up to about 10 meters or 35 feet tall with a dense crown and branches covered in long, sharp thorns. It's famous for its white flowers that bloom from May to early June, which is why they're often called mayflowers. These flowers are pollinated by midges, bees, and other insects, and later in the year produce small fruits called haws, a red berry-like poem. They're edible raw, but are most commonly used to make jellies, jams, syrups, or wine. The hawthorn has deep cultural ties throughout Europe, and in some areas is seen as a symbol of hope, in others it's a charm against witchcraft or vampires, and in Ireland it's known as a fairy tree, believed to be a place where those bees beings after dark would assemble, play music, and strike back at anyone who had wronged them. So cutting down a living hawthorn, especially those not planted by human hands, is believed to bring very bad luck. Its wood is hard and burns well, making it a popular firewood, but as a smaller tree it has little commercial appeal outside of hobby applications. Speaking of which, our hawthorn Northern Ireland is looking really fantastic. I'd like to send a big thanks to Steven here on TikTok who sent this excellent piece. It looks great up on the board, combining well with its Gaelic sibling, the ash tree. We've only got one piece left, so let me know if you've ever eaten any haws and tell me what tree we should use for whales. This is a really cool piece of wood. Time to finish up the British and Irish Isles map with the lovely land of Wales, which I'm going to make out of a piece of European yew, Taxus baccata. A small to medium-sized evergreen native to many parts of Europe where it grows naturally on steep limestone slopes, the yew is famously extremely poisonous. If its leaves or seeds are ingested, it can cause respiratory failure and circulatory collapse, and a lethal dose for an adult is said to consist of only about 50 needles. Now, the red flesh that covers the seed, called the arrow, is edible, but you're really going to want to proceed with a lot of caution. Their twisting trunks and striking features have made the yew a popular ornamental tree and they're often found in and associated with churchyards and cemeteries, where some of the largest and oldest trees in northwestern Europe are found. Including, and forgive me in advance for butchering this, Wales's own Hlangernew yew, which is found in a churchyard in Hlangernew village where it's claimed to be around four to five thousand years old. Although this is disputed as the heartwood of a yew tree often decays as it ages, making it impossible to determine exactly how old they are. Where the yew is most associated with whales, though, is the longbow. Yew is among the hardest of all softwood species, with a Janka hardness rating exceeding that of even denser hardwoods like the white oak, and it's remarkably flexible for how hard it is. The Welsh used those properties to build powerful longbows, and their archers were feared on battlefields for centuries. 
Yu Wood is also just straight up pretty. I'm absolutely loving how this piece turned out. A big thanks to Henry at Blockworks UK for sending this piece my way. And with that, our map of the British and Irish Isles is complete, and I really love how it came together. I sincerely appreciate all of you who watched this series, and of course, now it's time to make a tree map of a new region, so comment and let me know which one you'd like to see. Again, if you're enjoying these compilations, please go check out my in-progress U.S. tree map that I'm making for YouTube. It's 50 totally different trees, none of which were on this old U.S. map. It's a ton of fun, in addition to just making the pieces and telling tree facts, I'm also making other cool stuff, like with the very first episode, I made some black walnut ice cream and a little ice cream bowl out of some black walnut wood. If you're curious as to what region I started next after this one, I did Canada. I did not connect it to this map. I know it's what a lot of people wanted, but it just was actually not possible. The projection that I used for this looks really nice. That's why I chose it, but you'd need one that, that warps the pieces more significantly in order to throw Canada on top. So I'm doing more regionalized views. That leads me into one final thing. A lot of requests I get on TikTok and on here is to do the entire world. I'm just personally not interested in that for a few different reasons. One, the pieces would be really small and I want to see as much of the wood as possible. I think it'd be really disappointing to have an episode all about your country and you get to see like this much of the wood. That's not very fun. And while I agree that it would be a really easy way to generate a ton of excitement and probably draw in a bunch of views, I don't know that I could ever actually finish that project. It would take years if I ever could. I'm having a really hard time even sourcing wood for Canada and that's my neighboring country. So I'm much more interested in these regional maps like the one of Great Britain and Ireland. After I finish the Canada TikToks, series. I'll upload another compilation here. And then the next region of the world could be anywhere. We'll find out together.